couple of days after she came back, a, a truck appeared in the front of the, my house where I used to live there, and they wind, wind up people, only men. And a couple of hours before this, my father told me to take the beer a separatory. So the mother said to my father, uh, maybe wait, wait a little, because we used to dry the laundry, the same thing in the attic. Used to dry, uh, uh, dry the laundry. Uh, I'm finishing with the laundry, so you go together. At the same time, German, the Ukraine, Kovalchuk, what I was a witness for him, took out my father and put him in the truck. I went over close to my father and asked him, what going to be? He said to me, go away, they will take you too, in Yiddish, in Jewish. So I walked away, and this is the last time I saw him. Then they took him to the headquarters for the, the Gebietskommissar from the German. And they had, they, had, they had their two lines, the people. They asked, what kind of profession? So my, my father was staying on one line, and my brother with my uncle, my mother's uh, brother, <laughs> stand on the other side, one side. So the business people, the people on one side, and the working people on the left side. So I, my brother thought, He'll stay with the father because the business people will let him go because the working people, they maybe accuse him as communist. So he jumped over to, the, to my father's side. They took him out. <laughs> out of town near, near the cemetery. About four hundred people <laughs> in the shed. I followed. I followed the, the the trucks to the cemetery. The Ukraine police surrounded the place. They wouldn't let anybody go. But it was on the other side of the cemetery. I heard the shooting. And the trucks came empty. And. The Germans denied. They said they didn't shoot them, send them away for work. I went there and I found pieces from an armband, pieces of flesh. The graves was flat. You shouldn't read, recognize anything. They, but even was true. The people didn't want to believe it's true. 